We've got some hey, I'm Luis. And I'm Luis. And you're listening to the Content is Profit podcast. We spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to create content that turns into profit. And today, we're bringing them to you so you can take action immediately and start creating real content momentum. If you'd like to learn more about how to turn your content into profit, go to contentisprofit.com. Oh, yeah. Like, later, we, like why we did that. But, but we so got, many novelties. We finally got the Green Ranger back on the show. Like, popular requests. People are like, where's the Green Ranger? And now we have the Stormtrooper, too. But oh, look at that. With that said, hey, what are we talking about today, Fonsi? Tell me. Tell me more. Today, we're talking all about how to exit your business without <laughs> exiting. Uh, I'm very, I'm very excited about this topic. Honestly, I'm, I'm very excited, excited about, about this, this topic. Too. I know you are. I, I know you are because when you know we, when I talk with our guests, uh, like, I get like, me out, get me out, <laughs> get it out. Like, yeah, guys, I, I keep him hostage. Um, go ahead and follow the show guys, on social media at Facebook and in literally every platform. We are everywhere, so whatever feels right for you, go ahead and follow the show. That is right. And if today's guest help you move one step closer to your goal. Please don't forget to share this episode because you might be doing the exact same thing for somebody else. And don't forget to leave a five-star review. Thank you. Episode 200. Can you believe it? And because of that, we had to bring a special guest, someone that's going to teach you how to transition from business operator to business owner, baby. Let's go. That is right. He'll teach you how to exit your business without selling it and guess what if you feel stuck operating your business with no way out there's hope for you in today's conversation today you learn how to enjoy the benefits of being a business owner oh yeah and today's guest none other than two-time inc 5000 company an entrepreneur 360 award winner and someone who went from being an unemployed school teacher to millionaire all through entrepreneurship Please welcome the master of exit without exiting, the one and only Jason Duncan. What about, what about it? What's up, Jason? How are you doing today? Man, I'm doing fantastic. It's a great day here in Nashville, Tennessee. Let's go. Jason, I got to say something. <laughs> if I if I didn't know your name, I would say you're like a twin brother of Bradley. <laughs> Did you guys Bradley. Yeah, you guys look alike. <laughs> so Brad, Brad was just on my show last week. You have to go check it out. Yes, I know, I absolutely. Know. By the way, for those listening, I mean, great, great interview. Like, just we're gonna put it out on the in the links below. So you got to do scroll down and, and go check out the conversation. But Jason, that is right. Just so you know, guys, his podcast is called "The Root of All Ooh. Success," and as he mentioned, go check out his last episode. Yeah, is probably. It's probably amazing. I mean, look at him that right <laughs> Jason, we're very excited to connect. I mean, we connected through social media and what a wonderful thing, right? Like, uh, you know, we've we've been on it for for years now and it, we're always surprised when we connect with with incredible people, right? And and the way that we chatted was very genuine. There's some some stuff that you have ready for us and, and for the audience that we we'll, we'll just don't spoil yet. But like when I was looking through your content and what you say and what you do, it resonated big time, right? Because uh, when we started the business, the idea or the initial thought was not to exit. We're like, this is our baby. Like, that's it. Like, and then we found out in the journey that actually people build businesses to exit and I make a ton of money, but your exiting is a little bit different. Right. And that's where it got me a little curious and you have a special hashtag in there that we'll reveal in, in just a second. But I'm very curious, obviously on that side of things. Uh, and, but before we dive into that, like, tell me a little bit about you, your business, like who's Jason, like why from school teacher to millionaire like to this like why is this passion why you do what you do well i truly believe that entrepreneurs are the ones who change the world it's not parents it's not the police it's not government officials it's not school teachers and I, you know i've been a school teacher and i'm a parent but i'm telling you those people are able to do what they do because of entrepreneurs I mean, the police wouldn't be able to have the protective equipment and the cars that go fast and the way that, unless somebody had invented that stuff. If somebody had 
gone into business for it. Parents wouldn't be able to influence their kids through the ways that they take them and show them the world and introduce them to new concepts if it wasn't an entrepreneur who came up with things. Like when I was a kid, it was the World Book Encyclopedia. Well, today's kids got the internet. It's people putting this stuff together, entrepreneurs. Think about the start, the guy who started Nike or this guy who started Reebok. I mean, you're thinking it was just a shoe company. It's an apparel company. How did they change the world? Think about how many people are alive today in better shape because one person had an idea to make a shoe company so that you could go running. Entrepreneurs are the ones that change the world. So that's why I live this mission of helping entrepreneurs build amazing businesses and then exit them so that they can go on to do it again. Oh, I, I love it. I mean, I, I honestly never saw it like that. I, I think I share the same view as you, you know, that entrepreneurs are the ones that change the world, but I never went that deep on like look the 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 tools that the people that we see operating day to day they were all built by by entrepreneurs yeah. right i was like oh, wow like that is that's you, yeah mind-blowing honestly do you think jason that there like today there is uh hate or like this like hate or like false perception for entrepreneurs right because the the world has been really i feel like can it, cannibalize is that how you say like it's been like bashing the in the floor where like you say hey i'm an entrepreneur and people are like ah whatever they dismiss it right is it because the social media aspect that people are like if i have an online business if i publish something on facebook i'm already an entrepreneur right like what does it mean to be really an entrepreneur well i think there's two things that it means to be an entrepreneur and that's risk and innovation so most small business owners don't go through either one of those. They're, they're not innovating anything. They don't go through risk. And they're, that just makes them a small business owner. That doesn't make them any value, any valuable, le any less valuable or more valuable. It's just different. A small business owner is not necessarily an entrepreneur. And there are lots of people out there that are good technicians, that are good business owners, but they're not entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are the ones who go out and they they take on an abnormal risk that's unreasonable for a greater benefit that's going to make the world a better place. They're the people that innovate and create new things that weren't mm -hmm. previously there. That's the difference between an entrepreneur and a small business owner. And I think that there, there's any hate. I think it's the hate for coaches who say they know how to help you build your business when they've never built anything themselves. That's where the hate is. And that's where the entrepreneurs get bad. I love it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I, I, I think we're at a point in time where it's very both sides of the spectrum. Either some people, you know, direct the, the hate or is like way too popular. It's literally like the new, I feel like it's the new rapper. Like a lot of kids <laughs> are like, oh, I want to be an entrepreneur, right? Like I want to be the new Eminem. I don't know. I honestly never heard rap. But <laughs> <laughs> I was wow. like, wow, um, that's so 1999, brother. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yeah. but, but I feel it's, it is like that, yeah. right? Because now you see, like you said, all these coaches online talking whether they can help or not, right? And I think it like it builds up a hype of people. It's like, oh, I want to do this. And let me tell you, like being an entrepreneur is not for, for everybody, right? And actually today I saw a, a quote, Alex Charfin is the one that shared it, but I think he said he doesn't remember who he got it from. But it was something like this. Uh, an entrepreneur is like somebody that is riding a lion. People that are looking in from the outside are saying like, damn, that guy is a freaking <laughs> badass riding a lion. The guy on the lion is like, what the heck am I doing on top of this lion? <laughs> right? Like, how am I, how am I going to survive this? Right. And I, and I think that was so, so accurate. So that being said, I'm extremely curious on how was that transition for you? Cause you're saying you were a school teacher, right? Mm -hmm. How was it? going from let's say uh the, the school system to riding a lion right <laughs> well i'm a i'm what i call an accidental entrepreneur and i think a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs out there are in the same boat they, they find themselves through life circumstances in a place where they have to make a choice and for me that choice was entrepreneurialism i didn't really know i didn't really choose it like mm. Yeah. I didn't choose it out of a out of an option list that it, there were dozens of options. I had been teaching school. Well, actually, it goes back. I, I was in the I was in pastoral ministry for 13 years, uh -huh. and I was also selling health and life insurance to small business owners during that time for most of the part. And then I got tired of doing that. I wanted to go make a difference in the world, and I went and got a master's in education, started teaching school, and absolutely fell in love with teaching. And that's where I discovered my superpower, which is teaching other people. But then. 
coming out of the Great Recession, 2010, 2011, started affecting school districts all over the country, specifically in the county where I taught. And even though I was the number one teacher in the county, had the highest test scores amongst all my peers, um, they had to make teaching budget cuts. They had to cut teachers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was the last guy hired and I didn't have tenure. And I was left without it, without getting my contract renewed for the next next school season. And I thought, well, what are, what am I going to do? Well, at first, this is going to go find another teaching job, but they weren't there were none to be had. And I so I found myself as an accidental entrepreneur making a decision. I'm going to try to go into business for myself and see what happens. And I gave myself a deadline, and the deadline two three days before the deadline hit, I closed a huge deal and uh, never looked back. Wow. Nice. Oh, can, can we get some insights on that deal? What was it? <laughs> I'm, I'm curious. Well, I started a company uh, that today is I still own. It's still called uh, it's called Energy Lighting Services. And we do LED lighting retrofits in commercial buildings all over the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was pitching a large uh, regional hospital here locally to Nashville. And I, and, and I was I was about two thirds of the way through my sales pitch. Now, I, I knew how to sell like I'd been in sales for over a decade by this. Yeah. Point. Yeah. But 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 mostly just kind of as a way to make the ends meet. It wasn't a profession or a career. And yeah. and I knew how to sell. And I'm, I'm two thirds of the way through the sales presentation. And, and one of the the vice presidents of this hospital stopped me and he said, can I ask you a question? And I said, uh, yeah, sure. And he said, uh, has anybody ever told you no? <laughs> and and I and I looked at him and I said, no, sir, they haven't. Now, what I didn't tell him is that it was the first time I'd ever made a pitch like this. And, yeah. and so so he, <laughs> then he then he asked me, he said, well, why wouldn't I do this? And I said, I don't know. Why wouldn't you? And he turned and looked at the CFO and then he turned and looked back at me. He looked at the CFO again and said, write the man a check. <laughs> Let's go. Wow. That's amazing. Epic. We need, we, like, we need like a, a sister show or a brother show, like epic sell stories. Like, epic sell stories. Yeah. I mean, been, it, this, it, it, this has been like out there, you know. It just, get, it just give me the chills. It's so exciting. Like the possibilities, right? You're of starting something, bringing it to somebody and then, you know, having that big moment, that big check that finally, you know, yeah. hits the door. You're like, I did it. Right. I mean, at that moment, you're like, I did it. And then you realize the amount of work that comes after it. Too. <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, well, we're just, we're just getting started. Yeah. I, we, <laughs> we mentioned this like on the last show, Fonzie sold the first time, like something on social media, like years back. And, you know, you see this guy now with a t-shirt and backwards hat. He was full on suit selling a $500 <laughs> monthly, like, you know, recurring social media thing. Right. And that, that was like the big moment for us. Like that was like, yeah, that we made it. Moment. And we're like uh, three, three weeks later, that, we're like, this that, is way too cheap for the things that we're doing. That was the moment anyway. <laughs> that we jump on top of the lion yeah that totally. was the moment yeah. uh so that was perfect okay so that happens right you're you became like this entrepreneur right you had you had the risk you had the innovation on the solutions that you were bringing to the table like so now people normally right because this is, oh, or i'm assuming just because this is what happened to us right we become the operators of the business right and now we have to figure things out we have to okay what what are we actually selling are we actually is that the right thing to sell like are we listening to our audience like is this a service is this a product fulfillment blah 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 all these things right and and we take it on how is that transition for you is it ha has it been similar with the people that you help right and then what are the the common things that you see in nowadays with entrepreneurs in that operating seat well, I think most people start businesses with one of two things in mind they they want to be their own boss or and or they want to create a life of freedom, freedom of money and time and energy and that type of thing. But the irony is that most entrepreneurs like like I did is they become their own employee. They're not their own, own boss. They're, they're working for themselves, thinking they're the boss, but they're actually their own employee and they're stuck. They're in a position that they didn't build an exit. It's like an architect who builds this beautiful building with no back door. Like there's no way out of this thing. Well, that's called a dungeon. Last time I checked, dungeon, <laughs> bad things happen. So I built the business with no exit, no no concept of what this would be like. I thought I'm going to be my own boss. I'm going to make enough money to send my kids to private school and send my wife. And, you know, we get to go on vacation. And I woke up seven years into this thing going, wait a minute. Like this is why am I working 50, 60 hours? A week? Yeah, I'm making a lot of money, a lot more than I made when I was a school teacher or a pastor. Right. I'm making good money. I'm changing people's lives. I got employees who love it. Like everything's going great. 
but I'm required to be here. And I thought, man, something's wrong with this picture. This is not the way I wanted my life to go. I want to go do other things. I want to, I want to exercise my superpower, which is teaching people. I want to, I want to be able to go on, uh, on mission trips. I want to be able to donate time to, to whatever charities that I want to donate. And I can't because I'm the business owner. I'm the mm-hmm. operator. And what I wanted to, what I figured out in 2017, 2018, I started figuring out, you know what, if I restructure this thing the right way, I could be the business owner investor rather than the owner operator. And so I made haste to make that happen. And my life completely changed when I did that. And now I've done something that I refer to as exit without exiting. And I've dedicated the, at least this season of my life of training and teaching and coaching other entrepreneurs to be able to enjoy what I'm enjoying. Go to that next thing. Do the next thing that you want to do. Keep the business, own it, get all the tax benefits and all the financial benefits, but don't have to be there every day. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Sounds so, like a sounds like a, a a dream right there, huh? Yeah. yeah. Sounds, so so well, that's what we call hashtag juicy juicy. <laughs> hashtag right juicy there. juicy. Let's go. So um for those are you know are listening right now and they're like ah you know I'm happy <laughs> working like the 50, 60 hours, right? Like don't lie to yourself. <laughs> uh <laughs> we were there, I promise you. We we're like, oh, this is I'm I'm the entrepreneur, right? So like what are some of the the well, there's this whole, sorry for interrupting, but yeah. there's this whole hustle culture going on, right? I, I think now, lately, I've seen a little bit more of uh, people against it, like decreasing, right? But it's like, yeah, grind the 70, 80 hours, like sleep three hours a day, you know? It's like all this hustle, 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 which I think it has its place. There are moments where you do need to hustle. Um, but I think people get into it without the plan of how do I exit without exiting, right? How I, how do I transition yeah. from being the, the operator to the actual owner? So, yeah, I, I think if you, if everything you knew about business ownership was wrong, when would you want to know now mm-hmm. or later? Like, when do you want to know that you're thinking about it wrong? I think, I think one of you said, I don't know who said it, but like, you're lying to yourself. If you really say, well, I just love my job. I love my company. I don't want to do anything else. Well, I, okay. I'm not saying you don't love it, but here's what I do know. Yeah. You probably, unless you're a weirdo, you don't want to do that thing for the rest of your life. You, yeah. you, you have, you're, you're an amazing entrepreneur who's created an amazing company. You've created an amazing level of income, not only for yourself, but you're supporting the families and the children, the college aspirations and weddings of future kids and grandkids because of what you've created. Do you want to be a slave to that forever? Because the slavery that's the worst is the one you don't recognize. Mm-hmm. The chains that you're wearing to your business that you created mm-hmm feel good now, but one day you're going to wake up and they're going to be heavy and you're going to be like, yeah, I want to do something different. And it's going to take yeah. you a long time to break free. If you start now, I can help you get there. Not only just me, there's other people that kind of train you in this mindset, but, but yeah. my specialty is I can show you how to get out without selling it. That's a trick that I love to teach. Yes. Oh. So, so I, I'm looking here at your website, right? And you get the four steps to exit without exiting, right? Can, can you guide us? through those can you you know give them a, a an appetizer to the listeners right now so they're like i want this i want to jump in the bandwagon i want to stop being the operator the operator well i think the the first thing is you've got to embrace delegation you've got to be able to delegate tasks effectively and the thing is uh, most entrepreneurs um understand delegation but they don't know how to perform delegation because what they do is one of two things that rhyme with delegation, but it ain't. (laughs) They do something called confiscation where they confiscate all the tasks themselves and they might give a little menial task like, okay, you take out the trash. (laughs) Like they're confiscating all of the roles and they're making themselves the center of the business. I call it hero syndrome. They become Mm -hmm. the hero of the business. Every time, uh, 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 every time something wrong happens and the light shines in the sky, they come running to fix it. And that's called confiscation. You're confiscating the duties and roles that other people should have. The other thing that a lot of entrepreneurs do that rhymes with delegation is they do something called abdication. And these are people thinking that they've delegated, but they've in fact actually abdicated. In other words, they gave up the right to, uh, to the outcome 
and kind of walked away and, and shut their eyes to it. They, they think that by telling someone else to go do something and then turning their back and just hoping that person does it, does it right and doesn't pay attention to the outcome, they think that's delegation and that's not, that's abdication. So mm -hmm. the first thing you're going to have to do in order to be able to exit your business is you have to embrace delegation. You got to understand what it means. And that's part of what I teach. And I've got an exit accelerator uh, group coaching cohort that that's part of the central part yeah. of what I start with is how to delegate. And I give some people some really cool tactical things you could do to delegate to get those tasks out and not have to worry about it, which is step number two, which is eliminate stress. Stress is a killer. But the thing is, most people think that stress is caused by endurance of stressful situations, and it isn't. Stress is caused by too many open cycles at any one time. And entrepreneurs, you could call it spinning plates, you can call it balls in the air, you can call it open cycles, but entrepreneurs are masters at keeping too many of those things going on at the mm -hmm. same time. Yeah. And you're never going to be able to exit if yeah. you don't eliminate stress. I show you, and I've done this for dozens and dozens and dozens of people, I show you very simple ways to not just reduce, but eliminate stress. That Every time it pops up, there's a way to recognize it and a way to eliminate it in very short order. So those are the first two. I, I don't want to go talk. To all I, I love it. I don't know. No. Let's, let's <laughs> leave it out there. By the way, all the links are going to be right below. And we highly, highly recommend, obviously, go check out the, the cohort. We have two two dates, right? We have September 9th, right? That, that's, that's coming out very, very soon. And then important one in October oh, who's coming and uh, there might be a su surprise in there for, for that date. But I love this when you say uh, the, the juggling all the balls, right? Uh, I remember um, or the plates for, you know, those dirty minded fancies throw me out. Shut at all. I was just listening. I, that was my, my I'm listening face. <laughs> uh, but it, it, it's funny, right? Because like, I mean, over, we mentioned right over the last two weeks, we were kind of undisposed uh business wise right we were very very lucky and very thankful for our team that was able to fulfill like everything and we we're like super proud and excited because it's really the first time that we really step away for like 15 days almost um and it was like they took over like 90 percent of the of the task which is super super exciting but before that that doesn't happen now there's been these situations where we have some free time, right? Quotation, free time. We're like, oh man, like this task, like for example, when we first started like Fonzie with the video editing, right? Like he was the one that editing all the videos and all the stuff in the, in the multi-purpose in that, that we do. And the first hire that we had was that video editor, right? So now he's like, oh, all this time, right? And on my side too, with different operating tasks that we were like doing for outreach and we had some VAs coming into the team and they were like taking over and now we're like sitting there like, we have time and we have, like, what do I do with this time? And then we just find another play to juggle. And then another thing, and we're like, oh, we should chase that other opportunities when that's like not 100%. So is you you mentioned that that's a trait of, of this type of people. Like, how do we how do we stop or how do we figure out like with that new time, like what to do with that new time that that's happening, right? Because the people that are coming in are going to have wonderful results and that's going to happen. And how do, how do people figure that one out? Do we have to right. figure that one out before or after? No, I think it, I think it's a mindset, right? It's a mindset. So why are you here? Like, what? why are you on this planet? What is your superpower? What what are you uniquely gifted at? What will people pay you money for? What does the world need? Mm -hmm. Somewhere in the center of the answer of those questions is what you need to be doing. And it's probably not operating your business day to day. There's probably something else out there. And that's mindset. When I <laughs> exited Energy Lighting Services, I went through probably, I guess it was three or four months of an identity crisis because for a decade, you know, whatever, I had been introducing myself as president and CEO of Energy Lighting Services. And that was, that was my business card. It was on my LinkedIn. I went to networking functions and that's who Jason Duncan was. But I had to really think, well, why, why am I on the planet? Like what, what did God create me to do? And I, I discovered by answering those questions that my superpower is teaching people. And that's when I became the real Jason Duncan. It's like, I'm not just going to be some guy. I'm going to be the guy to help you get to that result that you actually want. That's what I want to do. And I think for entrepreneurs who are figuring out this exit without exiting thing is they're going to, they're going to struggle with identity. They're going to struggle. And you got to be prepared for that. Like, well, what do I do now that I don't have to do bookkeeping for my company? Okay. Well, what would you like to do? 
Now, there's one side of it where you could just go off and sip a fruity drink on a beach somewhere, and that's perfectly okay, but that's going to get old too. There's the other side is, we'll go start a new business immediately. Well, that's kind of hard, but you could do that too. But there's probably somewhere in between that you could truly pour into people, that you could train people, maybe start an apprenticeship program or or go and volunteer on, at, at high schools and teach entrepreneurial entrepreneurship. These yeah. are things that you have the opportunity to do. But you got to be ready. That mindset, it's going to take a while to make that shift. Do you think? I, I, sorry, sorry Fonzie. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I have this is a small question. I promise. Okay. <laughs> so, um, do, do you think people are scared to face that? I, I think they're ignorant and ignorant in the truest sense, right? It's not, I don't think they're afraid of it because entrepreneurs generally are not fearful people. Mm -hmm. But but the ignorance of it, meaning, and, and that word really means don't know, like not not dumb or stupid, but like they don't know what's happening. And and because of that, the unknowing, the unknowing limits them a little bit. And the mm -hmm. irony is that's what makes you an entrepreneur to begin with, is you don't know where this is going to go. You don't know how the business is going to work and you yeah. did it anyway. So quit giving me this excuse about, well, I don't know what I would do next. Forget about it, man. You didn't know what you were going to do when you started the company. You didn't know if it's going to live or die. Yeah. Give that business to other people. Let, stop being the hero of your business. Let other people run it. You maintain ownership and all the tax benefits, but you go on to do that next thing. You're going to love it. Yeah. yeah, I think um, I relate to what you said about spending so many years in that position, right? Like that became your identity. Um, I think I'm around that point right now where I'm like, oh, man, like I feel I'm, I start asking myself, like, what do I want to do? Right. Like, what well, wasn't I don't know what I'm going to do. Right. And I'm like, now that you mentioned, I'm like, dude, like I started this not knowing anything, not knowing literally <laughs> uh, photography, videography, nothing. Right. And I was like, oh, let me just educate myself as I went. So I think that is so relatable. And I want to challenge the person listening right now to ask themselves, right? If you're an, an entrepreneur, are you maybe getting complacent in the position that you're in? And maybe that complacency is leading to stress, right? Uh, on X, Y, and Z. And then you're scared of taking the next step, right? And that next step, can it be to, you know, delegate those operating uh the operations of your business so you can you know free your time and do so, uh, so much more um also i love what you talk about eliminating stress because i i can feel that when i'm stressed i am as unproductive shut down yeah like, i i, I shut over. down I, it's very difficult <laughs> to to get stuff done and honestly it's the first time i read about open cycles how you mentioned it but as soon as i read it here in your page i'll it clicked for me and I saw, I was like, wow, I have so many open cycles right now in my life <laughs> that those are probably what's causing stress, right? And I know you, you, you're you going to dig way deeper into that in, in the cohort, right? So yeah. again, I encourage the listener, go check it out. We're going to leave the links in the description below. So just swipe, tap, and obviously join the cohort. Yeah. Um, but do we have time for the, for at least the next two Four steps of exit without exiting. I, yeah, I, I, I can go. I can go quickly through that. So the third step is you've got to establish systems and processes, mm -hmm. and I can't really overstate how important this is because a system you've got to set up systems and processes to leverage so that everything works the right way, right? So so when you go to a McDonald's, uh, their hamburgers might be uh, uh, like acceptable like let's just all agree that they're i'm not a fan but they're acceptable you can go there and you can go to one in idaho you can go to one in oregon you can go to one in new york you can go to one in tennessee they're going to be the same because of systems and processes and they yeah. built a trillion dollar business on systems and processes okay go down to the mom and pop burger shop just on the corner their burger is going to be a bazillion times better they're going to be so much better you're going to love it but here's the thing mom and pop are never going to be billionaires probably never going to be millionaires. Why? Because they never systematized. They didn't process, they didn't put processes in place. And so if you want to learn how to exit without exiting, spend the time now to leverage your expertise by creating systems and processes for everything you need to do. And I actually have some very specific tactical ways of how you can do that in pretty short order. And it's not as hard as you might think. So that's step number three. And then the final step is you got to invest in people. You know, your business is people. My business is people. I've got some of the most amazing team members ever 
Like I've got people that have been working for me for almost eight years and they're millennials and that doesn't happen. Right. They've yeah. been working with me for a long time because they love the systems. They love the processes. They love that I taught them how to eliminate stress. They love they love the delegation that's appropriate. They love the culture that I've created. And so one of the things I teach you how to do is not only how to identify, find and hire the right people and onboard them, but also how to build the cultures of excellence, where I actually have five pillars of excellence that I teach you how to set these up inside your business so that you can make sure that your business is being built in the right way to operate in your absence. I I, I love it. I, I love this roadmap in mm -hmm. so many ways. And, uh, you know, as you were sharing those stories, I mean, we have definitely stories in each one of these steps for <laughs> sure. Yeah. And uh, it is taking time, right? Like these rows as a company is what, six years old, right? And just recently, like last year was 2020 was like our, our crazy year on in the good sense, right? Like we grew, we hire people for the first time. And, uh, and I've seen these stages, right? And uh, to have somebody in your corner like you kind of walk you walking you through those steps and making sure that this is a proven method, right? Because you've You've done it, right? And uh, and your people, your students have done it. I think that's so important. So I want to encourage everybody listening right now that's still with us to go ahead and check these links out because this is a massive shortcut and uh, lots of you know no headaches. Like I probably gained like you know close to forty pounds through this whole process, right? Like a guy that used to play soccer now, I'm the ball, right? I roll on the <laughs> on the thing, and so there's consequences to this thing. I mean, with the stress and the things, and and the, the eat the lack of eating, like sometimes that happens, right? So yeah. I want to encourage everybody, like, go ahead and 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 do do your research. You know, ask Jason, reach out on social media, right? The links are going to be right there. I'm sure that he's going to answer all these questions because this is so, so yeah. valuable just to keep your sanity, right? I I want to add something in the invest in people, right? I, I, how you shared it with us, I see it as investing talent, right? Like it is crucial to have the best people in your team, right? Like, and that is something that I actually learned recently is like the importance of hiring the very best on your team right but i see it on the the other side of the coin too is investing people that are going to take you where you want to go right so investing let's call it intrinsically within your business right and let's call it extrinsically investing in mentors right people again who are those people that are where you want to be go and invest with them right that's what changed our business at first we actually went to this event um that was late 2019 and we went with without any expectations they threw a pitch the guy that was on stage doing the pitch we were like we want to be where that guy is literally right and we had trust confidence with him everything so we decided to invest it was a a very large investment investment for us at the moment it was a five-figure investment we didn't have the money we had to <laughs> come up with a solution, but we were like, let's invest in it. that person, right? And it helped us, again, grow our business to the point that we find had to invest in people inside of our business at this point, right? We had to start hiring people and all that stuff. So again, I want to encourage people, invest in those that are going to yeah. take you to where you want to be, because at the end of the day, your business grows to the extent that you do. And you're only going to grow by surrounding yourself with extremely cool people, uh, <clears throat> just like Jason right here, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right, Jason, we have we have a couple questions to wrap up the show, right? Like probably our favorite questions. Ever. Oh yeah. Uh, before before those, I want to also highlight and and shameless plug to to us as well here because we have a lot of people. Like as I'm going through your four pillars or right, four steps right in your framework, I'm like, man, I, this is this is perfect. Because when people try to produce their content, like they try to keep it all to themselves, like they have all the business systems and the stuff, and then they start on this publishing journey to put their voice out there, right? And there's like, okay, embrace elevation, right? Like who's who's the team that you're gonna hire? Is there a video editor? What are your needs, right? Eliminate stress. That's that's gonna help out with the stress, right? The people you're gonna figure out you know, the systems and the processes. By the way, we have an amazing process called M2M with the uh, multiplication of your content. You can be everywhere. So, you know, if you are struggling with this, just let us know. And uh, also invest in people in your team. So those like as I'm going through this framework, like and for those listening, go through that framework too and apply it to either your business and publishing. For business, oh, man, Jason's right here for you, my man. And then mm -hmm. for your content processes and your content, come to us, baby. So I'm just going <laughs> to say that I'm just going to put that out there. But um, awesome. 
Jason, last questions, couple th couple things. What would be like a great action point for somebody that's like in, in defense, right? Like somebody that's, a, that's that business operator, right? That they can do today, other than going to your cohort. That, that's number one, step, that's step number one. Step to number two, what is it? So something that you can do right now today is I want you to do this. This is something, and I'll do a very, 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 very short version of this, but it's something I call an open cycles inventory. And so on this eliminate stress thing, I teach this and I could spend I could spend hours just on this one concept. But an open cycles inventory is just like what it sounds like. You're going to write down every single thing that you've got going on. Emails that haven't been answered, text messages, you're calling your mom, you haven't called her in a while, uh, mm -hmm. sending in your uh, your form to the government for you know something you got to do on taxes. What every single open cycle, in other words, every task that needs to be accomplished that you haven't yet done, you need to do it. Now, an open cycles inventory, if done correctly, is going to take you three to four hours the first time you do it. When you do them more frequently, you're talking 10, 15 minutes. And that's what I train highly, highly skilled entrepreneurs to do. Yeah. But do this open cycles inventory. And then once you've got everything written out, it's going to it's going to it's going to be a big thing to do. But once it's written out, you're going to divide that list into three sections. The first section are things that you can eliminate and close off your to do list right now today. And as soon as you start closing those out, you're going to feel an amazing uptick in your psychology and the way that you feel your feelings, your love, your emotion, your stress is going to begin to start melting away. Then the second column, the second list of things is going to be things that's going to, you know, it's going to take a few days, a couple of weeks, no more than 30 days to get those tasks closed. And you identify that and you start working towards getting those closed. And then the third part of that list are things that require outside involvement that you can't do. For instance, if you're in a business deal with somebody else and, you know, it's a huge thing and you can, but you're waiting on that person too. You identify that and then you give yourself mental permission to close that cycle for a little while. And then when you finish this open cycles inventory and those three steps, I promise you money back guarantee, you're going to feel no stress and you're going to feel so much better. And then every single time for the rest of your life, you start feeling stressed. If you do what I just said, and it won't take you three hours at the next time, yeah. if you do what I just said, you will immediately feel no stress. Uh, I, I'm ready. I'm ready yeah. to make a bowl of popcorn and <laughs> and do my open cycles inventory, yeah. Jason. Let me yep. tell you, Jason, I, re I, re I already have them in my list. I'm, I'm in my head. I'm like, ooh, this task I'm gonna yeah. put in there. Uh, Jason, this was a selfish invite to make sure that Fancy got the, the <laughs> treatment that he needed. Uh, whatever uh, it takes. Yeah, whatever it takes. Let's go. Yeah. Um, I remember be saying bye bye to all the stress yeah. in my life. I remember a very specific episode when we moved into a new house. We went from like a two bedroom to a four bedroom, right? So there's a lot more space to fill out. And then the wife went a little crazy and bought some furniture that I had to put up and, and create. And there's some stuff in the house that needed to get done, right? But then the week comes and then we're operating the business at that point, right? And we're like, hey, what do we need to do on this? And so, and I, I found a lot, obviously, of stress. And, and I was like, I wasn't getting things done. And I remember uh, listening to something very similar here with open cycles. Uh, they didn't call it open cycles. They, they call it containers, right? And it's like, how do you how do you prevent to like go there, whatever? In my head, I was like, there's a shit on stuff in the house that I need to get done. This is why at work I'm not productive at all because like, th th and now it's like clear as daylight. I'm like those were my open cycles. And then I remember that weekend it was like, this is the weekend I commit to finishing like all the house tasks, like all the furniture that needs to be put up, like all the stuff that we need to be putting together for the kid, for, for Katie. And uh, it was incredible. It was like, and what you're saying, like you're going to feel it. it it's, it's, it's incredible. So, and I, and I, and I never like really saw it until like when you explain it to them, I was yeah. like, ah, that's good. So that has to be one of those tasks that needs to be done uh, regularly. This, this action point just gain uh golden boulder status, right? Just here. golden boulder status. Yeah, golden, boulder. golden boulder. For Let's those go. that are new here, golden boulders are just like golden nuggets, just way bigger, way bigger, and way, way more powerful. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, last question uh, of the show. Where this has been, this has been truly a pleasure, man. Thank you so much. Uh, so where will you be without publishing, without putting your content out there, without creating? Well, I mean, if, if you're the best in the world, nobody knows about it. Who cares? Like you've got to get your stuff out there. If you're not publishing content, if you're not out there, if nobody knows, nobody cares. If nobody cares, nobody changes. If nobody changes, the world doesn't go where you need it to go. So you got to publish your content.
Love it, love it. Organic, organic, or, organic. Round of applause. This organic. And, round and, of and, applause. The, 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 and then the crowd, the crowd, obviously, uh, it's coming their way. Yeah, um, going wild. Just gonna leave it at that, guys. I mean, it's been 200 episodes, guys. Like every single answer is this one. Go publish if you are not yet publishing, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out at Bizverse. Go. Uh, thank you, Jason, so much. Is is there? Where where can we find you? Where can we connect with you? Well, I think the best place to connect is going to be Instagram or LinkedIn. I'm at the real Jason Duncan. So at the real Jason Duncan, that's D-U-N-C-A-N. You can find me there. I'm very, very active on both of those platforms. Of course, YouTube at the same handle too. You can find me there. Um, that's where you can connect with me the best. And of course, on my website's therealjasonduncan.com. Is that where they can sign up to the cohort in your website? Oh, no. I mean, you could find it through the website, but if you want to go directly to the page that talks about the Exit Accelerator Group Coaching Cohort, that's at exitwithoutexiting.com. So go to exitwithoutexiting.com and you can read exact. You'll see a video of me talking about what this is about, what you get, how much it costs to get in. And I'm going to offer your listeners today on this podcast a coupon code. Now, all they have to do is go to Instagram or LinkedIn and DM me this phrase, biz bros discount so if you will dm me biz bros discount i will give you a specific discount code that's going to take a thousand dollars off of the group baby look at that for you Free money, baby. Let's Free money. Let's go. <laughs> the one episode that throws money at you guys. I'm, I'm just going to say, not just money, like time. Like after this, hey. you're going to have all the time in the world to do whatever you want. I think today we made honor to the name of the show. Content is indeed profit, my friends. Uh, th <laughs> yes, thank you. Yes, I appreciate it. Again, like all the links are going to be right below. Go ahead, click in there, get those thousand dollars in your pocket on top of all the time that you're gonna have and all the incredible experience that you're gonna have with, with Jason and his cohort and, and yeah. his community. So um, it's time to become a real business owner. Let's go. Jason, do you have any anything else to add before we wrap up the show? All right. Well, I say this at the end of every podcast. I'm the real Jason Duncan, and Jesus is king. Let's go with that said, guys. Thank you so much for tuning into the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead and follow the show on your favorite platform and at Biz Bros Co. That is right. And if Jason here help you move one step closer to your goal, please don't forget to share this episode and, and leave a five-star review. Thank you. Bye, guys.